Hi friends, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I just wanted to share this video with you uh, that shows you how to make a mask for wind instruments for everyone except flute. And as soon as I figure out the best way to do that for flute, I will share that with you. Um, so here's what you need to make one of these masks. You need a little pattern or you, oops, it's upside down. You need a little pattern. Now what I did was uh, I went on treasure www.treasury.com, T-R-E-A-S-U-R-I-E, and they have um, a PDF on there and you can cut it out. And this is just for a face mask pattern and it's just one side, it's super easy. Um, I wanted to keep mine, so it's kind of grungy looking, but what I did was I put a couple pieces of paper together and then wrapped it up in packing tape to kind of make it a little more sturdy. Um, but if I need to put a pin through it, I can still do that. So um, you need a pattern, fabric scissors, pins, an iron, it's very helpful, um, and you need some elastic. Now these, I believe you can get a whole roll, 100 yards on Amazon for, I think I paid total like $12, and that was free, free shipping. Um, but you just type in face mask elastic or anything like that. Um, so you, you need some of this. Walmart had some and I ran out because I made some face masks for my family. Um, but they had them on a cardboard thing. So you could you can get them at Walmart. Um, Walmart is pretty slim pickings right now on fabrics and things. Um, but you can find a few things. Look for the clearance rack because you can find some uh, fabrics there too and it's much cheaper. Um, Walmart also has, if you want to just buy in bulk, show you. Walmart also has these little packs of two yard fabric in all different solid colors. And uh, you can get those, they're $5 for two yards. They also have packs that are four yards and you can get those, those are $10. And it's a little cheaper. Um, so the ones that I have right now that are not cut, I have this in light blue right now. I also have it in navy. Um, I, have, I bought gray, I bought orange. So you can buy all different colors that way. Um, and you also need a pen or pencil. Um, I like to use a Sharpie because you end up not seeing it anyway and it's easy to see. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pick a fabric and I'm gonna use, it's the first fabric on my, on my uh, stack over here. So I'm gonna use this fabric, this is like a lime green and I'm gonna open it up. And you wanna have about six inches of, I actually I do it about seven inches. You want about six inches of fabric side to side um, because that's how wide it is. But I cut it at seven just to give myself a little breathing room. So if you have a ruler, ruler is good. Um, just to give you some perspective, oh, I've got my, Pen underneath here so I'm gonna cut it about here so and I'm gonna be making a few things out of this green so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all the way up on here so that I have plenty of room out of my fabric you can make these out of pretty much any fabric you want to okay the next thing that you want to do is and and I just have this old kitchen towel so that I don't like burn my table. But you wanna make sure your iron is on. Um, you don't have to steam it or anything, you just need a little bit. Um, now, what I do is I fold it so that I have four pieces. So when I look at it and I open it up, I've got one, two, three, four. And it goes much faster if you do that. If you have a pair of fabric scissors, um, it's easier to cut. So I smooth that out. And after I smooth it out, make sure you guys can see. Okay. And then I take my iron and I just flatten it out really good because when it's in a package, it tends to get all wrinkled. So iron it out. Take your pattern and then take your little Sharpie or whatever you choose to trace with and it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just so that you can get an outline. All right, and then what I do is I take a couple pins and just so it doesn't shift on me, 
I put a couple pins through all four. So I'll probably do three, three pins here. Just so that when I go to cut my pattern out, it doesn't shift real bad. This fabric does that. Okay, I have my three pins. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut, and I cut just inside the Sharpie line so that when I sew, I don't see any of the Sharpie. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Put that over there, I'll use the rest of that later. And then you do have some scraps. It does make a little bit of scrap left over. I don't know if you're a quilter, I've taken up quilting, but you can sometimes use the scraps for edges or to fix binding or whatever. So you wanna keep your scraps. I am not gonna keep these though. So I'm going ahead and I'm cutting these out. All right, I now have my pattern. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this because I am gonna use my sewing machine over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pins out of my pattern. Okay, so I've taken my pins out of my pattern and I'm going to take two of the pieces, just two. And you're going to sew along all the edges except the straight one. So I'm gonna sew everything here I'm going to leave this straight edge, the short edge, open. So I'll go ahead and do that so you can see what I'm doing. And I do it with a quarter inch seam. Turn the fabric so we don't have to do multiple cuts. sewn it on all the edges. I'm just using white thread. If you have a different color thread that you want to use, that's fine too. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other two. Just one minute. Oh, I went too far, so I'm going to back stitch just a little bit here. I'm going to make that big of a difference. Not too far on my edge. fabric one more time. All right, so now that I have my fabrics sewn, I'm going to flip them inside out. So, and you wanna make sure that when you flip them out, you leave the, you push the, the corners out pretty as far as they'll go. So it should look like that, kind of. So I'm gonna do both sides, flip them inside out. Flip the corners out. All right, now you have two of these. Um, my suggestion to make your life easier is to iron them. So my iron is hot. I'm going to go ahead and iron them flat. Okay, there's the first one. Let me fix this so it doesn't get all messy. Okay, I'm gonna iron this one. So now I have ironed them together. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the two curved edges and they go in toward the center of each other. But in order to make the opening for the mask itself, you're gonna take about a half an inch. Where's my ruler? Lost my ruler. 
Oh, here it is. So you're gonna take your ruler and you're going to cover them. And, and basically what I do is I just line up the two points together like that. And it actually should come out to about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. So there's, there's my three quarters of an inch. Now this is really important. You wanna pin, this is where the pins come in handy. So you wanna pin this because you're getting ready to sew it. So pin them so they don't come apart, but you don't wanna pin them so that they get in the way of your, of your corners. So make sure you kind of pin them toward the center. I put two pins in it when I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, now what you're going to do now is you're going to sew along the outer edges and leave the two at like the mouth part open. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Here we go. Also quarter inch seam if you can. I'm going to take my pins out okay now in order to keep it so the aerosol sprays uh, very little very very little what you want to do is you want to sew about an inch each way now if I'm making this for trumpet or horn uh, an inch um, is plenty if you're doing it for tuba uh, or baritone or trombone I'd say probably do three quarters of an inch that allows for more room for the mouthpiece um, you can also do an inch for any of the reeded instruments. Um, of course, be careful with oboe bassoon because they're, you know, they don't have any protection over their reed. But um, if you want to see, an inch is good. So you want to go from your your line here, your seam. Now it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Okay, so you want to go from your stitching line and about an inch in. So what I would do is just take it and make a little dot. Oh, that didn't work very well. I'm just gonna use this skinny sharpie and make a little dot so I know how far. And then I'm gonna come in an inch on the other side. And this one's gonna be for trumpet or French horn. And so now I'm going to sew a vertical line from this point to this point and then back stitch. And then from here to here and back stitch. So now you have your mask, and if you look at it, um, it will open just enough here in the center for a trumpet mouthpiece, um, and then the sides will, of course, surround so that uh, surround it so that any aerosol spray that gets outside of the mouthpiece will be caught by the fabric. So this is the part is finished. Now I like to go ahead and trim my thread off of the sides very quickly because it gets in the way for me now you don't have to trim thread if you don't want to until the end but for me trimming thread it's easier to do this way all right now um what i do is you want your elastic now so you want a ruler um, if you're making them for high school kids i suggest to use 10 inches uh, for each earpiece. So that's the length of one of my rulers here. So I'm going to cut two of these at 10 inches a piece. So for adults and your high school kids, you wanna make sure they have plenty of flexibility. For petite young ladies, I usually do like eight and a half inches. Um, for middle school kids, you know, probably 
eight, eight and a half inches. I, when I make them for myself, I make them nine inches. Um, so anywhere from eight to 10 inches of elastic. So I have my two pieces of elastic now. So the next thing that I'm going to do is probably just, a, and you're gonna take the end that's open, okay? And you're gonna fold it just a little bit. So maybe about a quarter, a little more than a quarter of an inch. And this is where the iron comes in handy. And you just iron that down because that's gonna come real handy. You gotta have that, that fold there. So, all right, now that, that it's folded, you're going to take, and I'll turn it facing the camera so you can see how much I use. So you're gonna take your elastic and you're going to put your elastic in this way. And in this way, and you and I usually leave uh, about a third of an inch ish between the pieces. Now you're going to fold it over, and you're going to fold it one more time. So now you have no fraying ends. So it looks just like that. You're going to sew it on this side, and you want to start a little bit on the uh, elastic and it'll go right on. So I'm going to turn this and I'm going to go ahead and do the sewing part for the ear pieces and show you what it looks like. You have to hold it still. You could put a pin in it, but I'm a little too impatient for a pin. Here we go. I back stitch as well on the tops and the bottom so that it's secure. Just trim that off and that one side is now finished. Make sure your string is pulled tight on there. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to fold that and it's about a quarter to a third of an inch that I fold over. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can eyeball it. Make sure there that it's ironed for your seam. Now, once again, I'll show you, you turn it over, you insert these on either side, and then push down, do one more fold so that there's no fraying seams, and you take it to the machine. You gotta hold it, unless you wanna put a pin. Like I said, I'm a little lazy for a pin. So I just like to fuss with the uh, elastic. So here we go. your mask complete and you just trim the ends off and the double stitch keeps it from coming undone. So now you have a mask with two ear pieces and then the center piece is where that goes in. So I'm gonna put it on. So it looks like that and then you put the instrument through here and there's plenty of room for the mouthpiece to go in, this works best. If you're gonna use berry sacks, I suggest that you make this instead of an inch, this seam here, probably three quarters of an inch to a half of an inch. Same for tuba and possibly tenor sax, trombone and baritone. So I hope this helps. For those of you who have band moms and booster clubs that wanna go ahead and start making these for your school year. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at uh, Allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N dot Rawlings, R-A-W-L-I-N-G-S at Montgomery dot K-Y schools dot U-S. Thanks so much.